you guys, it's a special day. Teresa Caputo is here. I'm so excited to be here and to meet you. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. We were just talking about, just like we were just starting to record, how crazy your fan base is. Mm -hmm. How young people, Mm -hmm. old people, middle age, everybody Everybody. loves you. Yeah, Knows you, grew up with you. Like, your demographic is wild. It really is. Sometimes even, like, at my live shows, there'll be, like, young kids, like, seven, eight years old. What? Yeah. yeah. I that said, is if, wild. I, if I ever said to my dad at eight years old, can you buy me tickets to go see some lady that talks to dead people? Yeah. My dad would be like, are you freaking crazy? No way. Wait, that is <laughs> Yeah, crazy. they'll come as fans. But, you know, you don't realize, you know, how death really does impact people, young and old. So whether if they lost a sibling or even their grandparent, it was someone in their life that they really felt a connection with. And young children are able to connect with spirits. So I think sometimes for them, they love to come also because it validates things that they might be sensing and feeling. Wait, when you say young people, you said so casually, Mm -hmm. (laughs) young people can also connect with spirits. Yes. Young children and animals are actually more connected. I believe we all can connect with our own loved ones that have passed away. Young children more so because when things go on. And you actually got your first, what do you, do you call them visions or your first connection? Yeah. Or? Mm-hmm. My first experience. When you were four. I was four. I remember it vividly. What did you, what do you remember? There would always be a woman standing at the end of my bed. She would never say anything. Um, I would also have experiences also of just hearing things and people calling my name. There was no one around and I didn't know who the woman was until I was almost 30. I was in my grandmother's house and I saw it. It was just this one picture. And I'm like, Graham, I'm like, who is this woman? And she's like, that's my mom. She's like, you know who she is. That's my mom. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, that is the woman that would stand at the end of my bed when I was a child growing up. When did she die? How She died a couple of years before I was born. So you see this woman at the end of your bed for so many years. Were you haunted by it? Did you accept it? Did it scare you? Well, I used to, as a child growing up, I used to wake up with blood curdling screams. Okay. And my mom would literally, they would, my parents would come running upstairs like some, like they were expecting to see like someone hurting me or like blood all over the room. Like that's how bad the screams were, uncontrollable screams. And then it wasn't until I got older, I had blocked it for some time. And um, it wasn't until I was almost 30 that I realized that I was not only sensing my own loved ones, but everyone else's. And the reason why I would freak out so much is because souls bring me through their passing. So they will make me feel what they felt as they died. So that's what would trigger my anxiety. So like if someone passes from something in the chest, they'll actually labor my breathing. You know, um, if someone passes suddenly, um, tragically, and they want their loved one to know that their soul immediately left the physical body, they'll hit me in the back of the head. Like I'll feel like somebody tapped me in the back of my head. So I feel physical things. Go through this though without going crazy and without having their family, you know, put them away. Yeah. Well, exactly. I always say that my parents, if I didn't have the parents that I had, I don't know where I'd be. Because they they believed you right away. Well, I come from a very spiritual family um, and a strong faith family. So they kind of embraced, you know, be like, oh, okay. You know, and I I would just say things that were like, okay, that's odd or, you know, but no one ever really made a big deal about it. A lot of things I didn't also convey to anyone. So because the moment would all pass, mm-hmm. the moment would pass, and I would just be nonchalant, be like, "Yeah, mom." The you know, my mom would be like, oh, "I don't I wonder why that babysitter's not coming back." Well, I'm like, "Well, I told her to tell the lady to stand out, you know, get out in front of the TV. I can't see the TV, and there was no one in the in the room but me and the babysitter." So, <laughs> 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 and what about classmates and teachers? And yeah. Stuff? So school was very difficult for me. Um, being in a classroom, you close that door and I would see the energy then would be trapped in the room and I would sense and feel things and I would always feel that I had to get out of the room. That's like isolating yeah. though, Teresa, mm-hmm. now. Yeah, it was. Like I never, I didn't want to leave my yourself. house. I didn't want to leave my house for the longest time. And that's the crazy thing. And here I am, you know, I live on a tour bus. I travel all over, brought my live show, not only in the United States, but, you know, over to the UK So it's crazy. That's what I was thinking too is like, you're such a personality. And I wonder like if like you're, you have this gift, right? Mm -hmm. 
do you feel chosen? Like, how does it? I do. You like chosen in a way. Well, I feel that this is my soul's journey here in the physical world. Mm. You know, I struggled with my gift for many years, probably almost a decade, because I couldn't understand why I would be chosen for this, or this is what I was supposed to do. And then I went through, okay, this is great. I can sense and feel other people's loved ones, but who's going to want to come and see a medium? Who's going to want to talk to their loved ones that have died? I couldn't understand that. And what I learned is that unfortunately, no matter who we lose or how they die, we're sometimes left with burdens and guilt. A should have, a could have, a would have, and only if. So and we're questions. just, yeah, we're left with, um, you know, it, what if I was there more? What if I checked in on them more? What if I spent the, whatever, whatever it may be and, or any negative emotion, it doesn't give us the ability to heal. Mm. So I put my gift in God's hands and I said, if this is my soul's journey, then open the doors and I will walk through them with my gift. Did you have, were you able to answer that question? Like the, why me? Do you understand why I, you? I don't ask that. You don't ask it? I don't ask it. I, I used to. I really didn't get the answer because here I am. I just said, if this is what I'm supposed to do, then open the doors and I'll walk through them. So, okay. This happened, started when you were little. Then you're saying you embraced it and figured everything out in your Mm -hmm. 30s. Yeah. And then became a medium. So I was- come see you. Yeah. So I I was doing it, you know, out of my home. I had a very large uh, clientele, if you'd say. Um, And- uh, Courtney Mullen, who you met, my manager, she's the one that unfortunately she lost her dad and uh, she's been involved in television and she came and had the experience and it changed her life. And she said, everyone should be able to have that experience after the loss of a loved one. Wow. And she asked me if I want to do a television show. I'm like, all right, you know, you know, so I thought I was going to like film a couple episodes and, you know, go on with my life. You know, they used to make fun of me because I'd be like filming for the show and I'm still making appointments. And then like, oh, she realized what's happening. I had no clue. Like you didn't think it would blow up like <laughs> no, this? No, absolutely you, not. Well, Never in a million years. I feel like you still don't really get no, it. I don't get it. Because even on your new show mm-hmm. on Lifetime. Yep. That's coming out. By this time it will be out. Mm-hmm. you say like, I can't believe this is happening. And I'm like, how does not she believe it? Still can't. You already had a show. Like we said before, everybody knows you. Well, like when you said it, like, oh my God, she, she loves you. She's been, I'm like, yeah. it's still like, what? Yeah. Or, you know, seeing a billboard or, you know, being on a, a TV show, or being on your podcast is just, it's crazy to me still. I mean, I'm just Teresa. That's a, what makes you so special. And we also talked about you still live in, in Hicksville. Mm-hmm. I still live right next door to the house where I grew up in. Can my we parents. petition to change the name of the place? Because, <laughs> like, well, it's so unfortunate. No. No? No. Actually, the, they just renamed my block of several years ago um, yeah. in memory of a little girl that passed away. Yeah. Does it have a connection with you? Like, did you? I actually did read them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She she was sick. She had cancer and she passed away several years ago. So they named the street after her. Wow. That's, yeah. you know, I was thinking about you and thinking like, I'm a person with anxiety and what does, what's the root of like my anxiety? And I'm sure a lot of other people's anxiety mm-hmm. is death. At the end of the day, sure. we're scared to die, right? Sure. And that's why a lot of fears and you deal with death every day, all the time. Does every it make day. you less scared of it? I'm not afraid to die. No. Look, I don't, I don't want to die. But the reality is I will, but I'm not afraid to die. You're not? No. You know, my my assistant, Lindsay, she's not here today, but um, she lost her fiance in a car crash re- recently. And she said to me one day, um, and it's still, she says, you know, we live this every day. And she said, I never thought in a million years it would happen wow. to me. So, I mean, and she had said that working for me and being with me for all these years has really helped her un- embrace what has happened. You know, her whole life was taken from her in an instant. So, wow. And it makes her feel more comforted knowing that he's there, just yes. not here. Mm-hmm. Right. And does that, is that what comforts you about death? Knowing Absolutely. that like, it's not the end in some ways? Correct. That's why, you know, people use the word closure and I'm like, I don't, I don't like that word because I feel, I guess, closure and maybe an emotion, but we still have that connection. We will forever have that soul bond with our departed loved ones. That is something that will never change. And what I want people to believe and to know when they either watch my show or just listen to this podcast is that there truly is an afterlife, that we are greeted by our departed loved ones when we leave the physical world. 
and that there is an afterlife. And to know that all those things that go on around you that might, it might remind you of your loved one that has died, or you just think of them, know that that is them. Know that that is their soul letting you know that they're experiencing life with you at that exact moment. Wow. Do you ever picture what it looks like, the afterlife? I do, but I- You can't- I'll find out when I get there. <laughs> so, so when you see the people, like, do you see them- somewhere so I see I just see I just see them like I see shadows and silhouettes mm. and then they make me feel things mm -hmm. I can't explain it I don't know how it works I yeah. wish it was something really cool that I could tell you that happens but it it just happens and that's why I just blurt things out do you have people close to you that died of course yeah you do mm -hmm. and are you able to connect with them when I can you want? I always say my own family gets screwed out of readings all the time <laughs> Why? Because, because like, it's the same thing. Like if you sense and feel something, you kind of second guess it, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, I feel as a medium, what I'm able to do is to validate for you that it's real. So I second guess it too. Or if I get things, I'm like, oh, why would I be getting that? Yeah. Like I knew that. So. When did you first tell your kids? Well, my kids, that's how my kids grew up. I mean. So my, it wasn't like break it, break it down for them. No, it wasn't. It they was knew. more for, oh yeah. Cause my kids were in school, you know, everyone's talking about, oh, my dad's a teacher. My dad's a police yeah. officer. My mom's a nurse. There's my kids. My dad's <laughs> an Italian importer and my mom talks to dead people. Oh my I God. I mean, you know. <laughs> did they, did they ever struggle with it in any way? No, I just don't think they really, it, it just wasn't weird to them. Yeah. It wasn't, you know. I was also thinking that it could be annoying for you. Like people come up to you as fans, but mm -hmm. also can want you to read them. Sure. Well, in that moment or, you know. Well, for the most part, when first of all, people, when they come up to me, I appreciate them. Right. Because they are the ones with their support continue to give me the ability to do what I do. Right. So I love and appreciate them more than anything. And I'm going to say majority of the time, 95% of the time, they're just like, I don't want to bother you. I just, I couldn't, I ha I could not let this opportunity go by to say, thank you, how you've helped me. Can I get a picture? <laughs> okay, so usually it's, <laughs> that's basically it. <laughs> so usually it's not. Okay, we need to talk about how the hair started. Because there was a flashback to like your your wedding day and I, hair. What she wasn't born with this hair, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I had pretty cute hair back in no, the day. No, you did. I mean, I had the shag. I had the no, pigtails. You did. I had big hair. I had nails. You had it all, but it yeah. wasn't this exact do that you've had no. for. So how many years is this happening? This is probably happening for I'm gonna say eleven years. So um, well, you have to understand. Okay. That's why I tell people. Listen. Yeah. Don't ever, if you're having an emotional moment, don't ever go to your hairdresser. That is the worst mistake you can ever make because that's what happened to me. Yeah. My grandmother had passed away and um, I was having a really bad day and I had just gotten a keratin and I went back to have my hair trimmed and I just sat in the chair and cried and cried and I just said to her, "Can just cut it, cut it. It's not the right length. And I ended up with this short that's how I ended up with my short hair. I had not had my hair that short since I was in seventh grade when I played you soccer had like and I had the Dorothy Ham Hamill. <laughs> Remember Dorothy Hamill? Yeah. Right? That, that was the last time I had that short hair. So you got short hair in an emotional moment. I mean, who doesn't moment. know? An emotional moment. Yeah. And, then, and then how did it evolve to this? I just, I wanted to let my hair grow again. Yeah. And I like... I, I like, I just don't like my hair in my face. Uh-huh. You know, I just, cause my hair, then I constantly put my hands through there. Right. So my nails will get stuck in my hair. Then, you know, if I have food. Yeah. It gets stuck. So I just like my hair off my face. Do you know what they say? Listen. Big hair, a lot of secrets in there. No secrets. <laughs> There's no, it's a lot of teasing and hairspray. That's all it is, folks. <laughs> and you can do it on your own too? I can, but very difficult on my oh, own. Oh, really? It's hard to okay. get the real bouffant. <laughs> <laughs> and what about, is it ever not like this at home? Oh, absolutely. Just, oh. Look, at my, just look at my Instagram. I'm oh. a hot mess. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, when, when you, when I, this is how I've always been. Yeah. When I go to work, yeah. I have my hair and my makeup and I'm dressed. I'm ready for work. I'm ready, ready to, to conquer go. the day, no matter what it is. You know, yeah. I mean, back in the day, back in the eighties, I mean, if I didn't have my hair and makeup done, it was, you know, red lipstick and sunglasses and you were out the door. Yeah. <laughs> that was the old trick, but. So everybody knows you probably in your small town too, right? Yeah. 
And it's wild. I asked you before if you ever got the itch to move to like LA because you're you are in entertainment. Mm -hmm. You have to go for work. But no, you stayed where you grew up. Mm -hmm. Right next to your parents, too. Right. And never got the itch. Never got the itch. How do you explain that? I just love it. Uh, yeah. Maybe separation anxiety. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just love it. I mean, I've lived on that block for 51 years. Wow. So I just love it. I feel comfortable. I love my neighbors. It's just, and to be able just to be in your home. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't have a gate or anything or, you know. You don't have a gate. A reg it's just a regular block. And people, probably people know they like do. where you live and stuff. They do. Okay. On your podcast, Hey Spirits, mm -hmm. you read... You read people. Yeah. And we talked about this before because I was telling you how I like seeing people in person. Yeah. It's easier to connect mm -hmm. with them. But you're able to do it over Zoom as well. Sure. Were you aware that you could before like the Zoom yeah. thing started? Because that was like when COVID, I feel like, yeah. is when Zoom got big. That's when it got, well, that's when it got big for me. Yeah. Um, I'm not good with the technology yeah. so <laughs> but did you know were you scared that might be maybe it wouldn't come through you know I've never you know people have asked me that are mm. you scared and you know that yeah. and it's because I always say things happen they're when they're supposed to mm -hmm. and spirit knows what we need not mm -hmm. what we want they know what we need to make tomorrow a little bit easier so back back then I did phone readings you know 20 years oh, ago no. I used to do phone readings for people only for people out of state and I always did because I wanted people to have that experience in person. Yeah. Because there's nothing like it. But people say it when they have the experience over Zoom. They're like, I felt like I was in the room with her. And the cool thing that I love about the Zoom is like spirit will describe things in the house, who's in the next room, what they have in front of them. I can't see and you're that. Not even there. So it's even. I'm not more, even there. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. even crazier for the. It is for the person you're reading. Mm -hmm. That is wild. And what I wanted to say before about you is like, you're such a character. Like, obviously, you're 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 like an entertainer, too. Obviously, you have a live show mm -hmm. like you have so much charisma, like. This gift working alongside that is just incredible. It's just me. You know, it's just me. I'm just I don't know like how to be you had anything. the gift and you were boring, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had this gift. Nobody, nobody wants someone boring that talks right. to dead people. Because right. I feel like you always make it so fun for your. How well, do you, you call them? To. Do you call them clients? I, I, um, for people that are grieving. Yeah, yeah. I, I call them my my uh, family. Yeah. Because <laughs> I I consider them part of my family. Like I think of people. Um, I hold them dear in my heart and pray for them and their families. You know, this is, it's tough. We need the levity with these messages. You know, th there are certain things that I want souls to how I want them to communicate. Um, and it's uh, for several things. You know, I learned over the years of doing what I do, there's only so many different ways that people can die, common burdens and guilts that we might carry. So I have spirit validate these things with unique things that no one would ever expect someone to bring up and talk about. So that's why I think it's also, if you want to use the term fun or, you know, um, lighthearted, because spirit will bring up things that happened years ago that someone might have forgotten about because they were too busy focusing on the negative. Yeah. They bring up and talk about things that have happened since they've died. They bring up and talk about things that you haven't shared with anyone else, maybe a conversation that you had with someone last week. And the thing that I love the most, besides the levity, is also their personality. Because what better way to validate that from the moment your loved one's soul leaves their physical body, they leave behind every disability, ailment, or suffering. They do not take it with them on the other side. So they're okay on the other side. They are completely healed. And then the oh. soul goes through transitions of learning so they can grow. And So do you believe in reincarnation? I do. You do? I, 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 I believe that we do. I've done past life regressions where I've visited past lives and have seen people in my life now in past lives. Wow. And it explains a lot of my, um, for me, a lot of my anxiety and quote unquote phobias. Well, you talk about your claustrophobia, which I relate mm -hmm. to. Yeah. I have that too. You said you were, it's mostly like suffocating. Yes. From like fabric or something like that. I do not like anything over my face. So nothing. So what about a, like a, a tanning bed? No. Those old, oh, no. old tanning beds? Okay. Okay. You're going back because I used to do those. You, uh, listen, I'm you, from the 80s. Oh, right. how they I didn't did have it? anything else. Very creative. What? Oh, I used to lay with it open. I didn't, I never close yeah, it. I made scary. sure that I could slide out. 
<laughs> so as long as I could slide out of back then, I was thin. So, you know, I so could fit left, through the crack. You left like a crack. Absolutely. And I could slide it. And then I used to do the face machine. Okay, so I got dumb. you. Yesterday, I met somebody who did uh, that, the, the, what are they called? The beds. And I was like, that's one of my biggest, I'm claustrophobic mm-hmm. too, biggest fear. And also, I think they had some scary movie where the, the girl does get trapped in one. I mean, I've seen that like lived out. You I know? would never watch a scary movie. I'm afraid of the dark. I sleep on a nightlight. Come on. I mean, <laughs> you're afraid of the dark. Yes, of course I am. Oh my God. I do not like the darkness. My my daughter gets mad at me because I'm always like with Michalina when she puts, I'm like, it's too dark in there. She needs a nightlight. And she's like, mom, do not put your fears on Michalina because you're afraid of the dark. I'm like, well, what if she wakes up and she can't see? She's like, she's fine. Wait, and what about like uh, closed spaces, like airplanes? Um, I'm fine elevators. with airplanes. Elevators was a struggle for me, but because I go in them all the time, yeah. Um, I... It doesn't yeah. bother me anymore. Some yeah. of them are really creepy. Yeah. Um, and I'll take the stairs. Right. But um, I took your elevator. <laughs> a little creepy. I was good. I went, okay, in, good. I, I went in the freight elevator. So you got <laughs> yeah. to know which elevator to no, take. No, <laughs> I, I mean, because, you know, death is such a number yeah. one fear mm-hmm. to know that someone like you who has such a connection with death mm-hmm. has other small fears like lights <laughs> like the light being turned mm-hmm. off is crazy but I you think hear about should... death you hear about the the most horrible ways people are dying every day how does mm-hmm. that not infiltrate into your life and make you like morbid because i think that the souls of the departed show me that they are at peace and what i do brings peace and comfort to someone mm. it's not about believing in what i do I, it doesn't matter to me if people believe in what I do. I want them to believe in themselves. I want them to believe in an afterlife. You know, I lived a very beautiful life. Um, I made sheltered in a sense and really naive. Um, and to hear the way that what people go through. There are some people that come for a reading and they don't want to live anymore. Mm. They don't know how to live after the loss of their loved one. And, um, you know, to be able to watch someone smile and to find a purpose again in in life. Right. I wouldn't change not one thing that I do. I feel like most people leave you with a smile. Mm -hmm. What if the departed tells you something that you think would upset the person that's there? Well, look, I mean, it could be upsetting because their loved one died. You know, I treat spirit like my kids. If you have nothing nice to say, then you don't say anything at all. Okay. (laughs) You, you go to the back of the room. What if the spirit's (laughs) like, tell her she was a fucking bitch when we were, (laughs) when we were married? No. You know, souls, you you know, the interesting thing that I find with that is souls will say, you know, I was difficult. Mm -hmm. I, we did not see eye to eye. I'm sorry. So when a soul says that they're sorry to someone, it means that they had to relive their life through someone else's eyes. They'll take responsibility for their part. So it looks like they did healing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's part of the journey when we get to the other side. That's, I feel like that's a really comforting, Mm -hmm. comforting thing to know. Another comforting thing that you say to a lot of people that come to you, if it's true, are like, when you say to them, they went without suffering. Mm Mm-hmm. I feel like that means, yeah, that means a lot to those wondering. And, and there are others that say, you know what, it was, it was a little difficult, but I, you know, I saw my father or I saw my brother Mm. waiting for me, you know, and the moment they start to leave the physical body, they feel that peace. I mean, it, it, I mean, listen, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I still say to myself, how could this be? This is crazy. After every reading I do, whether it's a live show, a private reading, or something with the new show, uh, Raising Spirits, I sit back and I'm like, are you kidding me? That was crazy. Because it's always something completely insane that Spirit has me say or they have me talk about that's like, how would I know that? Right. And then I'm crazy enough to say these things to somebody. Right. That's the other thing. That's what I was thinking too. You know, I was thinking about you. Do you still get shocked by the information or the? Sometimes you you feel it. You were saying your throat, mm-hmm. the back well, of your head. Well, that's interesting. That you you're like, "Ow, yeah. could you be more gentle?" Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not like <laughs> it's not like I'm getting beat. You know, it's just something that I feel. Yeah. I can't. I can't explain. But in, I, it used to um, was frightening before because I didn't know what it was. I thought it was me. I thought something was happening to me. I thought I was dying or something was. You know. Right. So until I started to understand that these are not my feelings, not my emotions. 
um, is when I was able to understand what was happening to me. Because there are a lot of different symbols for things. Yes. So there's not only a lot of different symbols, but there's a lot of different meanings for symbols. So like if somebody shows me roses, I have so many meaning for roses. Red roses is love and devotion, someone's anniversary, either a wedding or their departure. Yellow roses is someone's name is Rose or someone just loved the color yellow. So how do you know which one it is? Does it get well, more I specific? Show, they'll, they'll show me yellow roses. Oh, okay. And it's, and it's not like I don't hear, I just know that I'm seeing yellow roses. It's it's weird. <laughs> it's not, it's weird. Were you ever <laughs> worried or did you have the thought that you're going to pass it down to your kids? Like do your, did your kids ever did it cross their minds? Well, I think, like I said, I think we all have the ability. Oh, right. You did so say I, that. So I think we, I know we all have the ability to connect with our own departed loved ones. What I feel I'm able to do is to validate. Some people have a stronger connection. Mm. Um, have you so, ever met anybody like you? Oh, oh sure. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, some people, uh, actually just recently I met someone, but a lot of people don't know what to do with it. Uh, n they don't know what to do with their gift or how to uh, navigate right. through it. Right. Would you know how to explain that to someone? If someone came to you and was like, I'm, I think I feel a little something. Well, I would, I would just share with them what works for me. Yeah. And then hopefully that will find them on their path to help them on their, on their journey. Because look, it's not easy doing what I do. I say this all the time. I make what I do look easy. It's right. the hardest thing right. that what I have to do is to channel someone's loved one. And then trying to bring them peace and comfort and even laughter in a moment. It's really hard. But this, and not everyone is made or built to do what I do. Right. And you have to be, like I was saying, like so strong mm -hmm. to also comp compartmentalize a little mm -hmm. bit and not let it take over right. your life. Mm -hmm. When you walked into that restaurant and the, the, the hostess on your show... You knew how her mom died from like a fire. Oh God. Which that was, was so yeah. mm -hmm. and she wasn't a believer, she said. No. She said, I would have never believed. Yeah. You know. Well, I don't think every day someone comes walking up to you and saying, you know, who died in a fire? You know. Did you did you ever see the parody that like Kate McKinnon did on SNL? Which she's one? like it, Did she do you? Yeah. She's like, you know, it's only uh, in New, New York or Long Island when you walk up to someone in the grocery store. It's like, did your brother die? And the woman's like, Yeah, yeah, my brother died. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see that. Oh it's my god, hilarious. Kate McKinnon doing you is yeah. like gold. Yeah. She's amazing. She, yeah. Um, you did. You came up to this girl. Yeah. She said in an interview later, she's a total non-believer, mm -hmm. but yeah, she couldn't believe that you yep. that you knew that because she was like, you walked into a random you know? restaurant. Mm -hmm. How would you know? Do you have to ask somebody's or what's your rule? Like, do you say, do you want to know? No, I. I feel if souls, uh, like I've been feeling things as I'm sitting here, yeah. but spirit hasn't pushed me enough to get me to actually say something because not everybody wants to or feels the need to hear something. Mm. Um, so what was happening was um, three times I felt I, I was having difficulty swallowing. <clears throat> so either somebody couldn't communicate in the end and or there was something down their throat or they were restricted in their throat in some way somehow. And then I was shown that somebody missed the departure where they carried the burden of not being there when their loved one took their last breath or felt that they should have been there. Then there was also moment. an accident because I just started to taste blood. So that means that someone passed tragically. So either they passed in a car accident or there was a lot of blood at their departure or some type of bleed out inside. Wow. <clears throat> there were four souls in here right now. Four souls in mm -hmm. here. But you see, like, that's the other thing. I, it could be for someone that left the room. Right. You know, I don't have that. That I don't know. Unless you really tried to connect yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll just say certain things. Mm -hmm. um, and then if someone acknowledges it. Right. Then they're meant to. Some people don't want to hear. I will never push a message from the souls of the departed on someone if they don't want. Or maybe they don't need it at that time. Because I want to be able to deliver messages that are going to help someone at that time. Right. You're not trying to, because like people are afraid to go to a psychic, let's say, right? Yeah. Because they're afraid the psychic's going to be like, 
you're never going to get married. You're not going to have kids. You know, you're going to die tomorrow. Yeah, like, like that's not what I do. Right. I, I'm very adamant. Like if a soul comes forward and says, oh, you know what? You can have another child. Or like if you're talking, if the spirit brings up things that you're thinking about doing or wanting to do with your life, I take that moment and stop. And I say to that person, listen, this does not mean that this is what you're supposed to do. This, these are your free will choices. Mm -hmm. It's your loved ones acknowledging that they know what you're thinking about. And if you choose to, they support your choices and decisions. Not that you have to or that you should. They're your choices. There's four souls. So, but passed tragically, is that correct? Yeah. Very unexpected. Yeah. Um, and where, because there, there was also a father figure. So a father figure could be a grandfather, an uncle, or someone like a dad to you. My grandfather. So know that he's present. Um, and know that the soul that left the physical world in a very difficult way, know that the soul is at peace. But were you supposed to see her or be with her? Yeah, we're supposed to see her when she died of COVID. Okay, because she says, I don't want you to feel that you should have made a choice to come see me. Do you understand that? Yeah. So that's why I got the restriction of the throat before and also of the breathing. Yeah. So know that she says, I, oh, she just showed me that you wrote something about her. Or you paid tribute to her? Did you, Regina? Wait, wait, wait. It's crazy. I thought you watched the show. You know, you know this happens. Oh, she, she didn't think she she was hoping. She had uh, just told me this. Oh, she, no. And I was like, don't expect like anything. But she told me about her friend that oh. died of COVID right before you came. We literally sent a message to our group yesterday. Because like, a oh, wow. Her, and we sent a message yesterday. Okay, so, so here's the thing. She acknowledged, she showed me the piece of paper and wrote my hero on the top of it. That's my symbol for where someone wrote something about someone, thanking them for the beautiful tribute. When souls talk about things that we're doing, it means that they were present for the exact conversation. So know that she knows, and she says, no one will ever forget about me. Were you going to get together and do something for her? Um, we got together, like, after she died. We, like, did a whole, like, celebration for her. So know that she wants to thank you. So even if you don't do it again and again, it's okay. Because she showed me, like, releasing balloons, lanterns, and things like that. She did that? Yeah. We oh, my God. So know that she knows what you did, and more importantly, that her soul attended it in spirit. Wait, did you take pictures when you re released the items because she goes oh you could see me in the pictures so look for like if there's like a silhouette or like a blurb or an orb know that that's her i'm dying thank you but, but, <laughs> but wait your grandfather's so cute he goes could i say something yeah oh is your grandmother still here in the physical world or did she just pass no my grand my grandmother passed like right after <laughs> Oh, okay, because I saw, so what he did is he handed red roses to the physical world. So that's my symbol for where they want to send love and devotion, and it went to a mother figure. So that's why I asked you about your grandmother, but then I saw the greeting of the hands. So know that the souls are together on the other side. Were you not expecting her to pass? She had cancer, but we we thought, like... She was going to be fine, like she was going to... We thought she got cancer because she was so sad. Mm -hmm. She, because she told me she died of a broken heart. Yeah, she literally. And no one expected me to die, but more importantly, go so quickly. Yeah, the flowers outside of her house like died after she. Died. Okay, so that's even why. Look, I also say this: when souls show me something, it's they show me the sign or symbol to get me to say something to you. It's up to you to place it on how it fits in your life. Mm. So the flowers, and I just got the chill. You get like a chill. Okay, because I'm sweating, and it's not from the menopause. I think it's from the lights. <laughs> yeah. But I, I asked her, I asked your loved ones to move through you so you could feel them. So sometimes it'll be a warm feeling. Sometimes it'll yeah, be a chill. So know that that's their souls acknowledging that they're present. More importantly, that I'm just interpreting it correctly. So it's up to you to place these positive messages in your life. Were you all going to get matching tattoos? My friend, for my, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So know that she knows it. This doesn't mean you have to get the tattoos or that you should get them. Get the tattoos. The thought of it. Get them. No. <laughs> the thought of it means the absolute world to her, even if you never get Aww. them. Yeah. Knowing and wanting to do something in memory of someone means the absolute. And then she looked at me. She goes, I still can't believe I friggin' died. No, she, yeah, because she comes in our dreams and my friend's dreams. And she, she says, like, it was all a joke. Like, I'm still here with y'all. Like, okay. we, no one can believe it. So two things with that. When I don't dream of my loved ones that have died. So I share that with people so you understand that 
when a soul visits you, that's a truly special moment. It is their soul showing you that they are okay. Mm. And she is correct because her she is still with you just in a different way. That's interesting. You said that I wanted to ask you that about mm-hmm. dreaming about yeah. the departed. That does mean something. Uh, yeah. But, okay. but some people connect in that way. Some people don't. Like, I don't connect with my loved ones in that way. I've only had one dream of my grandmother. One dream. Wow. All my other loved ones, I have not had a dream. And I just don't connect with them in that way, probably because I just see them all day long. So if you guys missed that because you didn't hear Regina, Regina works with me. She's here. She loves Teresa. She asked me before if she was like, I wonder if she'll read me. And I was like, you can't don't ask if if it happens, it happens. She was not expecting in this Mm -hmm. at all. And she got very emotional that you that her friend who passed of covid I mean, you guys heard Teresa. She 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 knew it. She sent her all the messages from her friend. And thank you. That was really special. Aww. Well, I would say thank her. Don't thank me. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. I mean, what a special, what a special day. You guys have to watch Teresa Caputo's new Lifetime show, Raising Spirits. Like we talked about before, you had a show on TLC for mm-hmm. years. Yeah. And we said how crazy it is that you're surprised that you're like having a show again. How is this different? How does it feel different doing it today? It feels different because I'm different. Mm -hmm. My life is so different. Um, And it's, you know, you're really getting to see a lot more of what it really is like for me on a day-to-day basis. Not just, yes, of course, there's still the readings, but it's more of like my own personal life. Me being out on the road, like you were asking about, you know, my, my assistant out on the road. Right. You know, you get to see a lot of that. Because people just think it's so great. It's glamorous. And it's not. It's far from. (laughs) Right. No, I was I was thinking what a what a great idea for a show where it's your personal life, because everyone is interested in you, too. Like what's going Mm -hmm. on in your house? Mm -hmm. You live next to your parents. Your daughter lives with you. Yes. There's craziness 24 seven. Yes. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm sure. I wouldn't change a thing. Even though you kind of wanted your daughter to move out. Uh, yeah. Daughter, well, I, ready, I need, I need my that. own space. I mean, come on, I'm 56, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, are you ready? So has she moved out as of today? You'll have to watch. Oh, you'll have to watch. Because you did <laughs> get divorced after a very I long did. marriage. Mm-hmm. About five years ago. Yes. But you are, like... Isn't wasn't it scary the idea to live alone then? After a thousand so many percent, years? Ab- absolutely, absolutely. And you know, uh, and I'm I'm fine. I'm yeah. great. You know, I always tell people too. You know, just because Larry and I are divorced, we're still a family. Yeah. So you know, he lives in California. I'm still here in New York, but um, you know, we're still friends and we're still family. We have children and grandchildren together. So, Do you, are you dating? I am. You are. I am. How does Teresa Caputo it's, meet people? I, it's not at the cemetery. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, are they with us? Are they not with us? Yeah. What, what do you mean? The, no, I this, mean, are, uh, yeah. I was kidding. I, I always tell people when you go to the cemetery, you're bringing your loved ones with you. They're not waiting for you at the cemetery. I don't bring them with me. They're they're with you. You brought them here with you. Mm. You know, dating is different. I mean, I met Larry. I was 17. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it, it was very, very difficult. And it's still, I still say, I can't believe I'm divorced. Yeah. You know, and I mean, we have a family together right. and it's. How do your, how did your kids take it? Cause they were older. It's not like they yeah, were young. Uh, not easy. You yeah. know, it's, it's still hard. You know, no one wants to see their, their parents get divorced. Right. You know, but you know, they could, they could see we both weren't. It just wasn't working. What worked, you know, 30 years ago wasn't working anymore. Yeah. And I think, you know, I always say that that's something that I was very proud of Larry and I, you know, to realize and to recognize that what we were doing wasn't working anymore. And we tried. Right. So we're better friends than we were married. I know so many people stay because yeah. it's easier or because of, of fear. Of course. Of and course. Because of, oh, you know, so what? Like, mm-hmm. we could just be friends and live together or. No. But no, you want it. You chose like yeah. to, to live your life. And fear was my middle. I was afraid of everything. And to be on my own and to have this. And it's just really, I mean, I really have evolved. We, we all have. Yeah. So, so did Larry. And to grow. And that's what we're supposed to do here in the physical world, right? We're supposed to grow and learn and evolve. And it probably feels so, empowering. Like, absolutely. And so, especially now that you're on your own. Yeah. It's it's scary. Um, you know, and, and I'm not gonna lie, I mean, I do miss I, I do miss him, mm-hmm. but in a different way. Are we gonna see you dating on the show? 
No. No, not at no. all? Okay. We're no. not getting that personal. No. Okay. Because it's different. It's not, you know, it's still my family. You know, dating is different now. Yeah. It's not, you know, I don't know. I, I can't explain it. Like how it's different, you mean? How it's different, you know, to, you know, to be with someone that, um, that you didn't grow is, up with. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm still friends with my friends from when I'm 14. Right. You know, everyone in my life, Has they've been, been in my life for decades. So it's, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. And I want to be, you know, independent. I want to be on my own. I don't, I want to have that independence, you know, in a relationship. And, yeah. You know? Well, you know what I think? I think you can make it whatever you want. Yeah. It doesn't have to look like it did. Right. Exactly. It could look different. You could be on your own and mm -hmm. have somebody you go on nice dates with. Just and enjoy. Have, right. And, you know, a, like a companion. To have right. someone to enjoy your life with. To have fun with. And, right. You know, I got my stuff. They got their stuff. Right. Because we all got stuff. And to keep it separate is such a beautiful thing. Mm, I'm because looking I think, forward to this chapter for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's exciting. Um, an important question, because I do talk a lot about pop culture and celebrities yeah. and what I do. Can you talk? So a person needs to, you need to be in the presence of someone who's connected to the someone who has passed. Maybe. You can't just like choose to talk to like Elvis. I can't say, you know. No. Summoning. No, it okay. doesn't work like that. They but come. It, oh, they come. They so come they can me. choose mm -hmm. to come to you sure. even if you're not sitting with Someone Absolute. related. Mm -hmm. Has mm -hmm. that happened with anybody? Yes, it has. That we know? It's happened when I'm in old theaters, if mm. they've performed there before. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very, very interesting things that 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 have happened. Do they usually so. end the conversation first or do you? Like, do you no, I one? usually have to say, look, I got to go. <laughs> I got, I got like 5,000 people waiting. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> Right. It's you like, didn't buy a ticket. Get out. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, is there anyone uh, that you haven't got a chance to read yet or to communicate with from the departed that you would really like to? Um, that's kind of a hard thing for me because I don't, um, look at people. I think we're all the same, mm. you know, I, and someone lost someone. And I always say that if someone is grieving and no matter who they are, if they want to have the experience, I would consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to share my gift with them. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's, celebrity no, specific. It's actually Someone harder. You're a huge fan it's of. actually hard for me to read someone that's in the public eye mm. because there's so many things out there about them. And again, right. I'm such a naive person. I mean, right. literally, I mean, Courtney's probably going to kill me for saying this. I mean, literally, Brad Pitt could walk by and I'd be like, oh, who's that? And she'd be like, it's Brad Pitt. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, or, right. you know, we'll be in restaurants and I'm like, oh, there's so-and-so and, you know. Yeah. You know, so it's. Right. I see how that's harder, too. It, it's harder. And and just because so, and sometimes someone um, with their life in the public, I feel like it's hard to kind of trust someone with that, too. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, sometimes I think people and people in general depending on how their loved one died or maybe who they are or who their loved one was, they're guarded in a sense. Right. So, well, you are, I understand some, that. You are having some names on the show. Mm -hmm. I saw in the previews. Yeah. Gloria, Stefan. Oh my God. And uh, Amanda Klutz, who mm -hmm. lost her husband yes. to COVID. She was on my show. And oh, I mean, that is story the is. the sweetest. Yeah. And you were able to. Oh, yes. With Nick. She had a beautiful, beautiful wow. experience. Good. Yeah. I'm excited to see that. Well, thank you, Teresa. Well, thank you. I'm so excited that you are here. Everybody go watch Raising Spirits on Lifetime. It's out on January 25th. And we're so happy to have you back on our television screen. Yes. Well, thank you. Oh, my God. I appreciate it so of much. Course. I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Yes. Oh, my God.